So I want to show you how to tie up um, a, a kokanee rig with a double hook and a double snail knot. It's pretty simple. You can save a lot of money and I'll go over basically the price of what it takes to make several of these up instead of spending three and a half dollars each. Okay, so let me show you what we're going to use to tie these up. Here I have some P-Line Sunrise Squids. They're made in China. You get eight pieces. These are about three and a half bucks each. So um, they're about 40 cents each. 38, 39, 40 cents each. The other thing you can get for squids is you can get these. Uh, they're made by Southern Pro. This is um, basically some crappie gear, but it's an inch and a half squid. These are little hustlers and they glow. I like the orange. They're pretty nice. Here's a little minnow tube. It's uh, got some silver and, and white sparklies with a little um, red belly. I'm gonna tie up some with this. These are again are like an inch and a half long. Oh, they're two inch. They're two inch little tube jigs. Okay, I got some beads here from Danielson, um, Danielson um, Supply. There's 90 of these. These are basically about two cents each. Oh, these little hustlers, these little glow ones, you can get 10 of them for 90 cent um, for a buck. So they're about 10 cents each. These little minnow tubes, there's uh, 10 of them. They're about $1.50. Um, was there 10 of them in there? No, it's a six pack. So these ones are about, um, they're about $1.50. So at about 20 cents, 25 cents each. You're going to need some hooks. Um, I've got some mustad hooks for six dollars. You can get 50 of these, so that's about 10 12 cents each. I've got a size four here, but um, if you want a little bit smaller, go with a size six. If you want a little bit bigger, go with a size two. I like the size four, and I've been using those, and they work really well. A lot of kokanee gear is tied up with a size six or even a size eight. I just think that's a little too small. I like these, these big hooks that are really going to get in there and get into the jaw have a good hook up so those are about 12 cents each um, you need some swivels for 69 cents you can get seven of them so those are about 10 cents each so I'll go over how much this all costs to make one and we'll make it we'll make some up oh I also like to get some glow beads you get a, um, a 30 pack here it's about 99 cents for a 30 pack so psh, these are well, like three or four cents a piece so i like to use those on there and then i'm not even counting the string um the line this is some 16 pound test here um and it's a spool i've had for a long time it's old but it's really good and it's 16 pound test and it's stronger than what you need but i found that um it works really good, um, this heavier pound test. I've used eight pound test, 10 pound test. Um, this is some 16 pound test. All right, so let's talk about just about how much it's gonna cost you to make one. Then I'll we'll go ahead and make one. So this is what the finished product looks like. Two hooks, a little squid skirt. There's a bead inside there. There's a bead on the outside, a little piece of line and a barrel swivel. You don't even actually need the barrel swivel. I tie a lot of these up where it just has a loop with a figure eight knot <clears throat> and I don't even use a barrel swivel. So basically your bead's gonna cost two to five cents. The swivel's gonna be about 10 cents. The skirt's gonna be 10 to 40 cents each. Hook's gonna be about 12 cents. Line, about a penny. So anyways, you're gonna be paying about 35 to 70 cents a piece. Now one of these, just like this, you can go to the store and find the same kind of thing. It might have a little blade, it might not. Um, it won't have a barrel swivel, it'll just have a loop in it. It might have big hooks, it might have small hooks, but you're gonna pay $3 to $3.50 for one of these. So you're saving quite a bit. So for the same price, you can make about 10. All right, let's make one. Okay, I'm gonna make one out of this uh, Sunrise Squid here and this yellow color. It's an ultraviolet and it glows. I like these because I feel like that the fish can actually see them down there when it's down there 40 feet. So I need one of these. All 
I need a couple of hooks. I got size four must hads and I like the ones, th these are actually a bait holder hook and they got little barbs on it, but the barbs go the other direction. So it doesn't really interfere when you tie the snail knot. I like these because the shank is offset a little bit. I just feel like that that hooks the fish a lot better. So I need two hooks. We'll need a couple of little beads. I'm gonna use one of these beads to go on the inside and then I'm gonna use a glow in the dark bead for the other one. So I need a, a bead for that. And then you need a piece of line. I'm gonna use this 16 pound test. You need a piece of line about two feet long. Now you're gonna waste some, but it makes it a lot easier to try, tie it up when you use a couple of feet. So if you have a little pair of scissors or fingernail clippers to cut that, that makes it a lot easier to work with. So the first thing we're gonna do is we're gonna tie a snail knot. Now there's lots of instructions out there on YouTube how to tie these up and I'll try to get as close as I can here and, um, and go as, as um, slow as possible so you can see. Go back and look at it over and over again as many times you need to. But it's, it's really simple. Basically, you're coming with your line through the front here. Now, my, the eye of my hook is angled down. Some of them may be angled up where you're looking at it and they're angled up like this. It really doesn't matter whether they're angled down or up as long as you come through the front of the hook here. Now, since you're tying a double snail, you need to pull about eight inches through. That's why I like to <clears throat> use about 24 inches. Now, if you want a really long leader on this, add more, you know, tie, get three feet or four feet, depending on how long you want this. So I got about eight inches of, of line here coming out the back. Now, what, what, all you need to do is just pinch a little bit of line right there and make a loop. See that little loop right there? That little loop right there. And pinch that, take your tag end and start wrapping around. Now start, if you go around this way, it's easier. You can grab it with your finger, so you do one, two, three, four, five, six, and seven. That's plenty. Grab it like this and pinch it good. Then use this tag in here and come up right in that loop right there. Make sure you get it in there. There. There you go. I got that and come up through there and pull this and then pull this line right there and tighten it up. And I grab both hands and give it a good tug and make sure that this is slid there up on all the way up on the shank. So there's our first snell knot. The next one, this is why you need this longer piece here. You're going to come in, you're going to do the same thing. Now I like my hooks so they're pretty close together. So this is the stinger. So what I do is because, because there's some slack when you tighten it up, because you got that little loop that you've made, I like my hook to hang back about this far, about a three eighths to half, no more than a half an inch. If you want it farther back, like so, then add a little bit extra slack. But I, want to, I don't want that much slack. Here's a finished one. I like it so it's about that far. Quarter eighths, three eighths, no more than a half an inch. So I snug it up pretty far up here like so. And I make a little loop and you just pull that tag end and make that little loop and hold it with your finger and take that tag end and start wrapping it again. So I don't want too long. So one, hold it with your finger against your other finger. Two, three, four, five, six, that's enough. Grab that, bring that tag in and bring it up through the loop there. Grab it, oops, I'd slip down my fingers. Grab that tag in, pull it snug in there, and then pull that loop. And see by putting up there, I got it about three eighths of an inch from there. And then I pull it tight. That's perfect. And then I cut off this tag end. You don't need to cut it all the way off. I cut it off and leave about a half an inch hanging there. That's just the way I do it. 
there's no need to cut it all the way up really close and risk you're your not coming unraveled. Okay, the next thing is we need a little skirt. So I got this, um, <clears throat> this skirt right here. This is my uh, the P-Line um, squids, and they work really great. Now, one of the things that you can do is this is going to sit about right here and um, in on here. And you can see that this skirt's pretty long. I think this is a three inch skirt. I don't like them that long. And because um, I want this hook to be bare and not getting covered up. So I'm going to cut off about half an inch. If you want it shorter, cut off a little bit more. So that's why I bought these little these Southern Pro crappie jigs because they're actually about the same length. Then all these squids come with a little nib there that they've made and you got to cut that off to make it so that you have a little hole. You can see that there. So you have a little hole there and that's why you need a bead on the inside. So the next thing you need to do is you need to take a little bead and you just need one of these little like three sixteenths inch beads. Quarter inch bead is too big to go on the inside. Let's see what size this says. Round beads, um, they might be three millimeters or something like that. Five millimeter. Oh yeah, they're a five millimeter bead and that's what they go by. So put a little bead on there, five millimeter bead. I just use a red one, it doesn't matter what color you use because it's going to get hidden in there. And you take and you poke this through the inside there. And up through the center there. And then you just kind of work it there. Work that up there. And there. Okay. So that's what it basically looks like like that. Then I like to take and I like to put another bead on the top and that's where I'm going to use one of these glow beads. There's, there's no reason really to even put these on here except for a little bit more attractant. Um, I, I like to use a glow glow bead because when you bring it up it'll, it'll get charged up by the sunlight. So I'm going to put a little glow bead on there. If there's another color that you want to put on there, like just for fun, let's put another little green bead on there, just for fun. I don't think it makes a lot of difference, but a little green chartreuse looking colored bead makes it look great. And it looks professional too. Okay. Now, you're nearly done, but we need to have it shorter. Now, when I fish these, I use just like these five inch, four inch, five inch dodgers. And the rule of thumb when you're fishing with kokanee is you don't want your leader to be more than two um, times as long. So I don't want this leader to be more than about six to eight inches long. So I'm gonna go ahead and tie this one to um, a swivel, a little barrel swivel here. This isn't required. And I'll show you another one. I'll make another one out of one of these little Husser glow jigs. And I'll show you how to do that without a barrel swivel. So basically I want my barrel swivel to be about right here. So I'm gonna start it a little bit short because I'm going to have slack when I tie my fisherman knot. I, used, I always use an improved clinch knot. That's what my dad taught me and that's what I always use. So I want to be a little bit longer than that so I'm going to start a little bit short and put about six wraps on this. Okay, that's plenty. Take my tag in and put it through. 
if you need to know how to tie one, there's a million videos. There's even little apps that demonstrate how to tie all kinds of fishing knots. But I always use an improved clinch knot. And so I'm going to tighten this up quite a bit because I don't want... Okay, now I got that tied up. And see, I got about, it's about eight inches long meter. So that's about what I want. Because the, the action of this dodger, all you want to do, this dodger is going to go through the water like so. And all you want, you want to have enough action that it's going to move this back and forth. If you have your leader too long, this isn't going to move. If you have it shorter, it's going to give it more action. And I, I feel like the, the ones with... Uh, that's what my uncle taught me anyways. Make it so it's about a one and a half, no more than two times the length of your dodger. Cut that off, and that's ready to go. So when you hook this up to your dodger, all you gotta do is take and put it into your little swivel here. And you're ready to go. So that's what the whole thing is gonna look like. That looks great. That's gonna look really good. First, you're going to want to bite that. Okay, so if you don't have a barrel swivel to use, and I've done this a bunch and it, it lasts a good long time, measure out about where you want it to be. I'm going to make this in about that long. And then tie a figure eight knot or some other kind of non slippy knot, whatever is your favorite kind. I like to use a figure eight because it doesn't pinch and bite into the line and break it. So you just take and you make a little loop like so. And you give it a, one twist, one more twist, and you take this end and you put it through there, like so. Then you pull it through, and it just needs to have a loop on there, like so. And that figure eight knot, you can pull and pull on there, and it's not going to bite into the line and break it. And then take the tag end. And cut it off. You don't need to cut it off really short. Just leave about a quarter inch on there. So there's that one. That looks really great. So let me show you the ones we tied up. We should tie up that one. Tied up this one with a barrel swivel. And I tied up this one earlier with another barrel swivel. It was a little bit longer. I may shorten it down a little bit. Make it shorter, but I think I'll leave it and I got a little bead on there. The beads on this one. Anyways, thanks for watching. That's going to save you a lot of money. Remember, this is only going to cost you about 35 to 70 cents. So for the same price of buying four or five already prefabricated ones, you can buy the materials to make um, 20 or 30 of them for about the price of um, three or four lures. And then you have a whole variety. One last thing I want to show you <clears throat> is how I store these. I get little bags like this. I got a whole bunch of them. You can buy them at like a hobby um, supply store and for putting jewelry in and stuff like that. And I just get these little Ziploc bags. It's about a three by four Ziploc bag. The nice thing is, is it gives you a place to store it. So this is one I made the other day. It doesn't have a barrel swivel, it just has a knot. It's made with a little bit smaller pound test. I think this is 10. But you just take and open up your bag, wind it up around two fingers, and pinch it there. And you can drop that in there. And then you can put them in your tackle box without them all getting all messed up. And when you get done fishing, if you let that dry out and then put it in there, it'll be nice and dry. Anyways, thanks for watching. Hope you enjoyed that. Comment below. Let me know if you have any questions. I hope you catch a bunch of kokanee with your new kokanee lures.